Okay, now that we have a nice and thorough overview of the performer modulation source, it's time to look at some possible applications of this modulation source. So I'm going to go to the uh, number five LFO window, change it to a performer. And um, in order to illustrate some of the applications here, um, let's first set up a scream filter in filter one. And I'm gonna turn the resonance up pretty high and um, I'm gonna use this performer to modulate some of these parameters. So I'm gonna select, I'm gonna select this one, smooth the saw. And it's at an eighth note ratio. And we, um, all of these boxes are selected beneath the steps. So that means our crossfader is activated. And I want to have this right in the middle so that I'm creating an interpolation between these two um, performer sequencers. And the amp mod is all the way up. These are all selected. So that means we're getting full amplitude from this modulation source. So now I'm going to drag this handle and I'm going to put it in the scream parameter as well as the cutoff parameter. And I want the scream range to, to modulate over the entire course of, of the knob. And with the cutoff knob, I want to have it a little bit smaller of a range, but I want it to be like that. So let's hear how that sounds now, just set up like that. So we got a cool little pulsing rhythm going and it's got um, this nice, uh, these nice humps down here as well as the sharpness from the top sequencer and the stutter at steps number 8 and 16. Now let's say I want to throw in another one of these stutters. I can click load curve and actually I want to do a little triplet stutter. It has these three humps. I want to throw that in right on the 13th step. So I'm not crazy about the way that sounds. I'm going to try uh, just that two hump step. That's kind of cool. And um, so that's one. So now I'm using my performer to modulate these parameters within the filter. I just have a normal square wave sending it to the filter. And, uh, and now I have this really cool rhythm by modulating the cutoff frequency as well as the scream knob. <laughs> So that's pretty cool. That's one application for the performer. Let's reset this and let's build a new performer uh, from scratch. And let us use it to modulate the intensity knob on oscillator two. So I'm gonna activate two oscillators. And let's select um, Let's select the hard sync oscillator, which sounds like this. All right, so I have my wavetable position all the way to the left. And I want to modulate this intensity knob with my performer. We're going to build a new one. So what I like to do with that is um, just select this uh, straight line and just drag it across just so I can see, uh, get a clean slate for what I'm doing. And so let's try to play with some of these curves here to have some fun. I'm going to add this curve here and on number five and on number eight. And then I'm going to have that same curve with the opposite pulled down like this. Oops. Clicked one too many. 
and I'm just shift clicking to select multiple spots. So now I have three humps. And then let's create a little triplet hump here. And maybe one um, triangle peak at the end of the sequence. And for the bottom, I want to just have plain um, saw shapes like that. So I'm going to deselect the load curve button. And now my crossfade uh, boxes need to be activated. So I'm going to activate them like that. So now I'm getting a nice interpolation between the two. So I need to assign this performer to that intensity knob. I'm going to click it and drop it in the uh, slot here. And I'm going to increase the range so that the top of my range is at the top of the intensity knob, which corresponds to the top of the range within the performer. So let's hear how that sounds for now, then we can tweak it further. Let's do a lower octave so we can hear it a little bit better. And I'm going to sync it up to an eighth note. So that's kind of a cool, um, sort of crazy sounding rhythmic thing. And now if I set up another filter, let's set up the band reject filter and let's send oscillator two to filter one, get a nice output and mix there. And now I'm going to send the same performer to the bandwidth knob. And let's see what happens when we play with that. And we can sort of reduce uh, the polarity this way so that it's doing the opposite if we want. And maybe we can throw in an insert here, uh, the sign shaper to just add some distortion to it. So now all I'm doing is holding my key and I have a really interesting uh, rhythmic movement and I'm simply using a performer to create these shapes that modulate these different knobs. And right now I'm only modulating two knobs, the intensity knob of oscillator two and the bandwidth of filter one. <laughs> Uh, I can I can bypass this insert and filter so I'm back to where we started with just the intensity knob. Now um, let's do a little bit of review and we'll select LFO 6 and change it to a stepper which we talked about last time and let's throw in um, an ascending stepper like this and put it in the pitch slot so we can modulate the pitch and we can have this um, end up maybe way at the top at, at two octaves up and so now we're combining a stepper and a performer stepper is modulating the pitch of oscillator 2 and the performer is modulating the intensity knob <laughs> Or 
we can try in our stepper maybe something more simple like alternating octaves. <laughs> And just like that, you have a very crazy groove going, um, which we created. We designed this sound just by simply um, applying a few modulations to a few parameters. And imagine what you can do when you're applying all of these elsewhere. Now, um, uh, let's take a moment to talk about macro again, um, macro controls, because this will help you sort of fine tune what's going on. So I'm going to assign my macro control to the side chain of the pitch slot and I'm going to I'm going to click that little dash so that I'm telling it yeah macro control contain, con, uh, macro control 2 modulates uh, stepper number 6 and then I'm also going to take it again drop it in the slide chain slot of the intensity knob so that I am controlling the modulation of the performer in number five and as well drop it up here and modulate this one and so by doing that what i'm doing is i'm al allowing myself to um use one controller to adjust the level of all these different parameters that i've um, modulated so if i just if i have my macro control down here set to zero so number two is is down at the bottom of the knob range. If I play a note, it's just a normal note. It's as if all of these modulations weren't working. But if I increase it, you'll hear the modulations start to take effect. So by doing that, I can control the intensity of all these different modulations with just one knob. That's great if you want to assign it to your MIDI keyboard like that. And then when you're performing live, you can just have your normal sound, bump up that macro control, and um, and um, and then you can add, add all that movement. And so to help you sort of remember that, you can also title this movement shorter as you can see maybe movement something like that okay now let's talk about some other applications of the performer I'm gonna go back here to LFO number five select the performer one thing that you can do is just to create a sort of groove you can use a I'm just gonna use for um, time's sake a random uh, curve algorithm like this and I'm going to assign that performer to the side chain of the amp mod box so that means that this is now controlling the amplitude of the overall volume so that that shape these shapes are a little bit too crazy for me, but uh, if we select maybe a, a little bit more of a normal shape, and maybe let's uh, take this fader down to the bottom, so we're just using the square wave. So that's a cool way to um, to create some rhythm in your sounds, where you don't have to program your MIDI. Um, within your host DAW to make that pulsing and you don't have to uh, like automate the volume for example you can just use a performer here in the sidechain slot of the amp mod and if you want to make your own curve like maybe you could make um, throw some of these in here like that so now you have a little bit more articulation Of course, you can always change the ratio. And 
And then we can drop an LFO. We can uh, take this LFO handle, drop it into our crossfader. And now we can uh, sweep our interpolation between the two using just plain old sine wave. Maybe make this a little bit slower of a rate. So that just shows you a little bit of what you can do with the performer. And uh, we'll talk more about it later when we go on to building our own sounds and sound design. Now we have a, a really good understanding of all the different modulation sources, the envelopes, the LFOs, the performers, the steppers, and hopefully you can see how using them in conjunction with each other, uh, you just have endless possibilities for designing your sound. All right. See you in the next lecture.